to sculpt, you need sculpting tools. And just like that in ZBrush, the sculpting tools are known as brushes. Now in ZBrush, we sculpt digitally, so we use the brushes inside the ZBrush. These brushes are so heavily used that they had to name the software ZBrush. And Z over here stands for Z axis, which is the third dimension axis, the 3D axis. Okay, so let's start with the chapter two and see what are these brushes and how these brushes works. Sculpting, I'm sculpting, I'm sculpting. Oh my God, this is amazing. I know, right? <laughs> Now let's move to our next chapter which is about the brushes in the ZBrush. So first we will cover the basics of the brushes inside the ZBrush then we will move to the advanced. Now let's first see what are the most commonly used brushes inside the ZBrush. Now ZBrush comes with a lot of brushes built in and some of them do very fancy things. So let's see most commonly used brushes here. Now by default when you start the ZBrush it comes with uh, by default the standard uh, brush which is always as your starting point which actually uh, what it do is that it lifts softly the surface of your sub tool or your model or your 3d object so this is you can see that it's just lifting the surface of my object okay and let me undo this one the shortcut to get the brushes is when you press B on your keyboard so when you press B on your keyboard you will get all these brushes now the second thing that you need to do here is that you have to select the type of your brushes. So next is the type of your brushes. So next thing I will press is C on my keyboard. When I will press C on my keyboard, it will give me all the brushes that are basically in the type type C. So you can see on the top I have A, I have B, I have C. So if I will press C, so I will get these all brushes that starts with the letter C. Okay. Now each brush if you will notice has its own letter for example if i want to select the clay brush so i will press l on my keyboard or just click over here okay so if i will press l on my keyboard so you will see that clay brush is now on the screen okay so it's uh this clay brush is a bit similar to the standard brush but it actually tend to fill the gaps before adding volume to the other area First, like suppose if I will uh, go here on the side, so there is a gap here in the ear. So if I will start, uh, well, like a painting over it. So first, what it will do, it will fill the gap. Now, once the gap is filled, now it will start lifting up my uh, surface here. Okay, so this is what actually this clay brush do. It actually fills the gap. Like suppose here in the eye, there is a gap, it's opening. So if we fill this and then it will start adding the, uh, or you can say it will start lifting the surface of it. So this is what the clay brush do. Now, another interesting brush over here, the commonly used brush is known as the dam standard brush. So dam standard is basically a short form of the Damien standard. Damien is the person who created the brush. So simple, I have to press B on my keyboard. It's a damp brush. That means it uh, will start with the letter D. So I will press D on my keyboard. And all the brushes that start with the letter D are, are there. Now I want to go to the damp brush. So I have to press S because it says S over here. Or I will simply click here. So what is the shortcut BDS? So if I will press BDS, so it will give me that brush quickly. So if I want to go back to my clay brush, so what was the shortcut BCL? So I will press B, C, L and I have the clay. If I want to go back to the damn brush, so I have to press B, D and of here the S and I will get the uh, damn brush, sorry, B, D and S. Okay, now I got the damn brush. Now, what does the damn brush uh, do? Uh, it have sharp crease. If I will draw with it, you can see there is a, a sharp crease over here. Okay but soft fall off. So you will see the fall off is very soft, but the crease is very sharp. So this tool 
is quite handy brush to create creases and lines on faces and anatomy okay just like if you want to create uh, create uh, like a crease of like you know wrinkles on the faces or those kind of things so let me undo this right now uh, and I will reduce its intensity which is too high and then start creating so you can see that it's too low now okay so something like this I can create like you know uh, wrinkles and those kind of things uh, that you want to apply on your brushes basically uh, like you on your uh, objects basically okay now another useful tool over here is called the flattened brush tool so i have to press b for the brushes f for the flat and the flattened brush uh, shortcut is a so bfa if you press bfa quickly you will get this what this tool is that you have to be a little careful with this because it works kind of like a power sander okay so uh, if you have a like a filer or a sander and you want to sand some area like suppose his nose so you can just go here and you can sand it it will flatten it up okay and if you think the intensity is too high you can reduce the intensity and then you can easily uh, sand any part so you have to be a little bit careful with that because you know if you go overdo with this so you can ruin your model just like what i have done here okay and that's what pretty much this tool do it sands uh, your 3d uh, you know object over here or your sub tool over here okay so uh, one more thing this tool can do is that if i will go back to this uh, if i will go to this part of the ear and if i will let me reduce the size a bit and if i will start sending this okay and if i move around you can see that if i overdo it it will affect the back of my brush okay so uh to avoid that there are some different uh tips we can do uh to avoid it so that it won't uh, affect the back side okay and we will see that later on how you can avoid uh you know affecting the back side of your uh, model okay now another tool over here is the inflate uh, brush tools so i will press b for the brushes here okay i will get the brushes option inflate starts with i and here is the inflate the shortcut is n so if i press n i will get the inflate inflate actually inflates the part uh, of your uh model that you are painting over like suppose if i will take this tool and start painting over the nose so you will see it will start inflating like it will start filling the air just like we were inflating inside the gizmo by pressing control and then rescaling it okay so it's like it puffs it up it, uh, it puffs the air inside it makes it puffy something like that okay so this is how you can uh, work with this uh, tool over here now other thing i can do here is that i can uh, what i'm doing is is the positive effect okay it's inflating but what if i want to do it uh, like a negative effect like i want to deflat it instead of inflate it so every brush have negative effect also if you press alt on your keyboard and start uh, painting over with the help of alt key if you're using a uh, pc or mac so you can press option key so what, what it will do it will do opposite so now it is deflating it okay instead of inflating it so every brush have a negative and a positive so negative value is basically when you press the uh, you can say uh, uh, like alt key okay so that's how it will do so just notice if i do over here it affects the back side also okay now uh, we have one more tool which is uh, a very interesting tool it's called the snake brush tool snake hooks usually we call it so if you press b on your keyboard and if you press s on your keyboard you will see over here we have snake hook and if you press h which is the shortcut of it what this tool will do is that this brush pulls out or stretches out the part you are working on suppose this one so this will pull it out and i can click keep on pulling it out okay and to the direction of my screen basically okay but you have to be a bit careful with it because it can be over stretchy 
like suppose this part you can see that it's over stretchy and which can create artifacts so be careful with it so you can see some artifacts over here because as it became a little bit over stretchy so you have to be careful with this okay so make sure you don't overdo it otherwise you will have these stretchy parts which will create uh like artifacts okay but if i will use alt key over here for negative you can see there is no effect of negativity over here it's only the positive effect okay now another brush uh which uh we usually use over here and most of the time it is used very commonly used it is is the move tool but before doing that let me undo the whole thing to go back to the normal one okay and if i will go back to my brushes i will press b on my keyboard and uh, one more thing is that when i un uh i use the undo over here it didn't undo the whole thing the reason is that because my undo is set up to certain amount i cannot do more than these okay otherwise i have to increase the memory and then apply over here which makes which might make my computer a little bit slower okay but i will keep it as it is now the move brush tool you just have to press b and m for move and all the m will starting all the brushes starting with the m is here and here is the v is the shortcut for the move tool so m b m v what this tool will do is that let me make it bigger it moves the part of my object okay so i can click on any part of my sub model or my object 3d object over here and it will start pulling it okay now it is pulling relative to the screen direction okay whereas my screen direction is like suppose if i'm moving if my screen direction is here and if i move something it will go in this direction okay you can see that but here if i want to move this in the object direction and if i'm trying to move it and move around you can see it wasn't moving relative to the object direction it was moving it relative to the screen direction if you want to move any part of your 3d object relative to your object's direction so what you need to do is that you have to press alt on your keyboard as i told you before alt is for the negative amount but here alt works as relatively uh, like relativity to your object direction now i want uh, i have just rotated like rotated this and if i want to move the chin uh, relatively to the direction of my object i have to press alt and click over here and then move it out and now if i will move it you can see that it was moving in the direction of the object not in the direction of the screen same thing over here nose so if i'm in the front view and if i press alt and move the nose you can see the nose is moving in the direction of the nose itself okay so this is how you can easily uh change your or move around with the move tool so let me undo this one now another tool we have here is uh, same as the move tool but it is known as the topo move topological tool now what is the difference here let me show you uh let me zoom it here to his uh face let me make it a little smaller now for the brushes i will press b on my keyboard then i will press m for the all the brushes starting with the m and here is the move topological the shortcut is t p for topology and if i will go over here and then start moving my object like suppose the mouth so you can see that how the mouth is moving clear so it moved but what is the difference between the move topology and uh, like topological or normal move tool now let me do the same thing by using the normal move tool so bmv and i have the move tool and now let's see if i will start moving the lips so you can see the upper lip is also moving with it okay so it is not it is not counting the gap it's not counting the topology over here but if i move it with the topological move tool which is the bmt okay and 
move the lip so you can see the upper lip is not getting affected so if you want to move in this form in topological form okay if you're working with the lips and nose eyes eyelids so you can use this tool this is quite handy tool a good for lips and eyelids so it will not affect the upper parts or the low or like uh, or the lower part it, they will keep them independently but if you're using the move tool it will affect the upper and lower uh, both at the same time so i hope you have understood about these basics uh, of the brushes and different type of commonly used brushes inside the z brush thanks a lot everyone for joining my course and following up with me and if you have not subscribed to my channel so please subscribe to my channel also click on the bell icon so you can get the daily notifications and i will really appreciate if you will watch all my videos online without downloading them because i need all those watch time hours please just support me uh, keep on sharing my videos with your friends ask them also to subscribe because i will be coming up with a lot of new great tutorials and full courses also don't forget to watch my online live streams and uh, watch the introductory video of the live stream you can also click on this icon on the top right corner where you can find my live stream introductory video where i have explained about all my uh, schedule uh, that I'm will be working uh, on my live streams basically. Okay, guys, so take care and see you in the next topic or in the next chapter. So by the time, take care and keep subscribing, keep watching, and keep zebra.